Alright, next what we're going to do is we're going to look at how to evaluate uh, trig functions with a calculator. Now a lot of times when we're actually doing problems like this, we're not going to use a calculator. In fact, I probably gave you some examples that I probably shouldn't put up here, but we can actually cal calculate pi thirds and pi fourths. We can do that without a calculator. Uh, so I probably shouldn't have put those up there, but that's okay. Um, but we will need a calculator on things that we don't know. So right now we know exact values for 30 degree angles, 45 degree angles, and 60 degree angles. And we'll talk about some others a little bit later, but uh, sometimes like a 25 degrees or a 40.5 we aren't going to really be able to know how to do that. So, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to learn how to use our calculator to calculate our trig functions. So, very important process for us. Um, it says the cosine of 25 degrees. So, if I type in the cosine of 25 degrees, I get an answer. Now, that answer might be right or it might not be right. And the reason that we have a little variation on whether it's correct or not is because our calculator has to be in the correct mode. So as you can see right now, the third line down, uh, my calculator is actually in radians. So when I hit that answer, it's going to give me my answer uh, as if 25 are actually a radian measure. So I need to make sure that's in degrees, and then that's actually the value I get. Now one thing you can do if you go back, I'll go ahead and uh, put my calculator back in radians. If you don't uh, want to go back and change every time you have to do something, what you can do is you can just do the cosine of 25 and then go back to that angle menu. Uh, the third one down is radians, but we actually want degrees. So even though my calculator is in radian mode, if I go ahead and put a degree symbol on there, you can see I get the exact same thing. So if I tell my, ang my calculator that my angle's in degrees, then it's going to allow me to get the correct answer. So we'll say it's uh, 9 decimal zero 06. I said that wrong. Decimal nine zero six. You get the idea. You're used to me doing that by now. Let's look at our tangent. Oh man. Okay. So uh, tangent of pi thirds. Now this time our calculator, since we're dealing with radians, it needs to be in radians. So let's see if we can't get this thing to work. So I'll hit the tangent of pi thirds. Okay, uh, I get 1.732, so that's fantastic. Uh, let me make sure that I told you the right thing and that it actually works. So I'm going to turn my calculator in degrees, and I'm going to go back. If I hit this thing again, as you can see, it's going to give me a different answer. But what I'll do is I'll go tangent of pi thirds, and I'll put the little radian thing on there and see if that works. Oh, this may not. We'll see. Oh, no, it didn't work. So yeah, scratch that. You can't do that. Uh, I thought you could, but that's uh, apparently not the right thing. So you can't put the radian symbol. So you need to make sure that your calculator's in radians if you want to do uh, if you want to get your answer correct. But it will work for degrees. I know that. So good to know. I'm even learning stuff today. So again, we get one uh, decimal seven three two. All right, so now we're getting into our more difficult type stuff. So as you can see, we're trying to take the secant of 40.5 degrees. Now, as you can see, the only buttons on my calculator are sine, cosine, and tangent. And you have these little things above, a sine, cosine, and tangent. And unfortunately, those are not the other trig function values. So to be able to get this right, what we should actually have to do is to use the what we know about secant. And what you guys should know about secant is it's the reciprocal of cosine. So when we're trying to do this, we're really going to type in this, 1 divided by the cosine of 40.5 degrees. Because that's the definition of what secant is. It's the reciprocal of cosine. So when we figure this out, we're going to hit 1 divided by the cosine of, whoops, already had a parentheses, 40.5 Again, I need to make sure my calculator is in degrees. So I get one decimal three five. Three one five. Sorry, I can't talk this morning. 
I should just not have to function this early. Anyway, uh, cotangent's the next one, but that's, uh, yeah, let's see if we can't figure this out. Now, again, there is no cotangent button on our calculator, so what we're going to do is use the concept that it's the reciprocal of one of our other trig functions. So we're going to say 1 over the tangent of negative pi force. So we go back to our calculator. As you can see, this time we are in radian mode. So I'm going to type in 1 divided by the tangent of negative pi force. And you can see we get a nice little negative 1. So there are definitely times when we're going to use our calculator to be able to calculate our trig functions. Um, a lot of times, though, if we do have a 30, 45, or 60 degree angle, or some other ones we're going to talk about later, we actually want exact values. We don't want to get this decimal. We actually want to get what this decimal is equal to. So keep that in mind.